Hey, it's Katrina with Happy Healing. Today I'm going to review some toothpaste that don't have fluoride in them, as well as some good charcoal option for um, floss, and then some deodorants. I make my own deodorant, and then also I get some other arm and hammer essential um, deodorant for my husband. And then for toothpaste, I typically also make my own, so I will show you how to do that as well. So to start off, um, on my fluoride-free toothpaste journey, I started off with neem, and I found out that I don't typically like the taste of neem. It's kind of like an Indian, um, I don't know, let's see. I don't know if I'd say it's like an Indian herb or what, but let's look at these ingredients. Indian gum, Arabic tree, that's the last ingredient. This does have Zytol in it, with it which is a sugar. Um, anyway, I don't use this toothpaste. My husband's okay with it. Um, I just don't like the taste. And then it has a lot of xanthan gums and other gums. It has sodium chloride, which is apparently sea salt. Um, the indica neem leaf extract. Overall, it's pretty good. It has coconut in it. Um, most of these have coconut in their ingredients. Um, it is gluten-free, fluoride-free, etc., SLS-free, which is good. A lot of, um, a lot of, like, soaps and shampoos you'll get tend to have, um, SLS in it. Okay, and that's the same with baby stuff, too. Alright, so Dr. B, Dr. Bright, um... Toothpaste has charcoal in it, um, it has coconut in it, it is soy free, so it should be gluten free, yep, it's gluten free, SLS free, vegan as well. Here's all your ingredients, it does have monk fruit, so it does have a little bit of sugar, if you want to consider that as a sugar, um, does have some xanthan gum and stuff of that nature, but overall it's pretty good, I do like the taste, this is typically what I use, um, unless I make my own. All right, and then this is something I got from Thrive Market. They actually gave it to me for free, and I didn't get to look at the ingredients in that case, but uh, after reviewing the ingredients, it does have xytol sugar. It is fluoride-free, has charcoal in it. It's vegan, free of dyes, paraben-free. Oh, it says sugar-free. I thought xytol was a sugar. My bad. Um, let's see. Um, peppermint oil, that's fine. A little bit of gums. Um, all right, overall pretty good. BPA free, that's good. This is what my husband uses because I cannot use it. It's made with baking soda, fluoride free, SLS free, gluten free, paraben free, fresh taste, all those little fancy things you want to add. Um, let's see, those are your main ingredients. Cytol, sodium bicarbonate, paprin, um, hydrated silica. I don't know why that's necessary. A whole bunch of odd words in here. Um, it actually has carrageenan as well, which is something I cannot do, um, because I have IBD and that will definitely mess with my stomach. Although it may be gluten-free, I cannot do carrageenan. Um, some of these toothpaste are not gluten-free and some people are like, that's fine. To me, that's, that's not really what I'd like to, to deal with if I don't have to. I'd rather just gluten-free. Um, all right, so this is some charcoal floss, um, coconut mint flavor. I messed up the thing when I opened it. Anyway, so I just put a little sticky here. Yeah, um, Thrive gave me this free as well, so I've been using that. Well, yeah, I use that like once. It's pretty good. Um, this is what I typically use because I, it's just super convenient, but it doesn't have the ingredients. I'm assuming it probably has, um, fluoride on the floss sticks, but, um, yeah, you gotta pick and choose what you can deal with. Um, alrighty. So, this is what I use these three ingredients typically to make um, my toothpaste. So, baking soda, plant therapy is my favorite. It can be used externally and internally, so I can put this in my toothpaste. Maybe in my foods if I want it. I typically just don't ingest them if I, if I can help it. Um, and coconut oil. Sometimes I go without coconut oil because coconut oil and actually baking soda can potentially make my nickel allergy worse. So I just am careful about um, what I use. Sometimes I use some cornstarch, 
but cornstarch is also bad for IBD. So you just have to be careful. Mix around with uh, what you can use. So I would mix maybe a little bit of this, this, and this into like a jar like this and um, just stir it up and just work for the best consistency you can get. All right, this is what I typically get my husband. Um, it's Arm & Hammer, um, free of aluminum, parabens, rosemary fresh flight, um, scent. It smells pretty good. I wear it every now and then. Um, we bought a couple of them and um, he's liked them, I've liked them. It does have fragrance in it for those who are worried about that. Overall, it looks pretty clean. Um, sometimes I make my own as well and I'll use grapeseed oil, which can be used externally, but definitely not internally mistakes were made there um i didn't really notice an effect but yeah i usually put mine in here in this little dark container um it just looks like creamy and stuff and then sometimes i'll use like a little spoon to scoop that out and just apply it um so yeah i'll mix grapeseed oil cornstarch baking soda etc with this grapeseed oil and then i'll add my essential oil of choice if you want to do peppermint or lemon or whatever you'd like um yeah, that's a fun option for deodorant, and then this is a fun option for toothpaste. Otherwise, you can use, like, any of these products, and um, that's it for now. Um, y'all comment below and let me know what kind of videos y'all would like. That'd be awesome. Um, happy healing. Bye.